I'm Mike de Griesley. I'm not an archaeologist or an historian. I enjoy walking and wild camping. In 2012, I walked along Hadrian's Wall with a mate of mine, Paul Humphreys. Before deciding to do the walk, I knew very little about Emperor Hadrian, the wall or the Roman legionaries. And with that in mind, I spent many hours online searching for the layman's guided tour of this national monument. My motto is this, if one doesn't exist, make your own. Enjoy the video. By the 4th century AD, the Roman Empire had reached the height of its domination. During its long history, Rome was to have many rulers, Caesars, emperors, of which only five were to be later considered as good emperors. The third of these was Publius Aelius Hadrianus, emperor of Rome from 117 to 138 AD. Today, we know him as Adrian the emperor who built a wall. Having arrived at Ponzi Alias, modern day Newcastle, we grabbed a quick coffee before catching the metro to RBIA at South Shields. Admission at RBIA is free, but if you look anything like a rebellious Brit, be prepared to be challenged. Papers in order, access is granted. We'd arrived on a day when new recruits of the 6th Legion were being put through their paces in close combat training. No to fear there then. This was my first ever visit to a Roman fort and my initial impression was, hmm, where is it? In order to get a better view of the fort, we need to head back to the West Gate. In here, there's all kinds of information as well as models of the fort and if you go to the top you can get a better view and overall understanding of the fort and its original layout. Now 1800 years ago wooden ships such as the Aquila would have sailed all the way from the Mediterranean to the port here at Arbiaia. The fort was originally built to protect both the port and the Tyne estuary. The year is 208 AD and the fort is just over 80 years old. However, it's about to undergo a dramatic change of use. But to help us understand its history, let's come back to the present day. What we see today are the fragmented remains of over 300 years of use and occupation. And for archaeologists, well, that can pose quite a few problems, as well as raise many questions when attempting to unravel its long history. So let's start by getting our bearings. Now in this view, we're looking east. We'll also add a few identifiable landmarks. Here we have a row of terraced houses which sit right on top of the fort's northeast corner tower and wall. This is a recent reconstruction of a block of barracks and part of the commander's residence. Here we have the reconstruction of the west gate and finally the visitor centre and museum. Now let's head back to AD 123. 
Prior to Emperor Adrian's orders for a series of forts to be built, this piece of land was, in all probability, the site of a Brigantian fishing settlement. Even so, the Romans wouldn't have thought twice about evicting the inhabitants from their ancestral homes or lands, and death would be swift if they resisted. The decision to build a fort on this site was purely strategic. It would form the easternmost part of the Hadrian's Wall defences and would protect a seaport which lay somewhere on the south banks of the Tyne estuary. It was probably the 6th Legion who built the fort here at Arbiaia. After all, only Roman legionaries possessed the skills and abilities to build such a substantial fort. All Roman forts followed a set ground plan, and once the outer defences had been constructed, next on the list would have been the three most important buildings. The Herea, Principia and Praetorium. The fort was to be manned by a cavalry unit. They would have also constructed barracks, workshops and stabling for the horses. It would only be a matter of time before Avicus, that's a civilian settlement, grew about the perimeters of the fort. And this is how things would have been for the best part of 80 years. It's now AD 208 and the emperor is Septimus Severus and he has launched a series of campaigns against the northern tribes, the Caledonians, and the fort at Arbiaia is about to undergo a radical change of use. The attending cavalry ally withdraws and joins the Emperor's campaign in the Caledonian Highlands. They are replaced by an auxiliary infantry cohort, and they set to work extending the fort's southern defences with immediate effect. All buildings within the compound, with the exception of the existing granary, are raised to the ground. Once north facing, the Principia is now rebuilt south facing on the same foundations. The Praetorium is relocated in the southeast corner of the compound, and the existing Herea is now joined by a series of new stone built granaries. The rest of the fort is then occupied by a limited number of barracks, workshops and stables, and its transformation into a supply fort for all the forts along Hadrian's Wall is now complete. As for the barracks, well, time's pressing, we have a ferry to catch, so we'll come back to those. And if anybody watches Time Team, you might recognise this place.